So what kind of angle do you take on a date? An acute one. <laughs> I know, lame. Um, today's notes are about degrees and angles. And the nice thing is, is that you have some background knowledge from geometry. If you guys remember, we have talked about angles and you in the past have learned about how they are measured in degrees. Um, they actually can be measured another way in radians. And that's something that you'll look at next year. Um, but what you know as of now is that angles can be acute, which is less than 90, right, which is 90 degrees, obtuse, which is more than 90 but less than 180, and straight angles, which are 180 degrees. Today, we're going to learn about negative angles and then different names for angles that represent the same measurement. And I'll get into that in more detail as we move through the notes. Now, for... Um, your past knowledge, you should have remembered that um, degrees that form a straight line are 180 degrees. Now, how do we know this? Well, if you start at the positive x-axis and then you create a straight line going through the negative x-axis, note that to the y-axis, this is 90 degrees. But if we keep going, that's another 90 degrees, which makes up 180 degrees. Now, if you're asked how many degrees form a circle, do your best to draw a circle. Actually, with notability, I think you can create a really nice, perfect circle. As you can see, mine's not so good. Let me move it down so maybe it looks a little bit better. Um, but if I asked you how many degrees form a circle, note that if you count from the starting point here, this would have been 90 degrees. This is 180 degrees to get to this point. Coming down here would be represented by another 90 degrees, which would make that 270. And then coming back around, we would get 360 degrees to form a circle. Now, um, when we study angles, it's really important to know the quadrants. If you remember, the quadrants go in the direction of a capital C. We call this quadrant 1, this quadrant 2, quadrant 3 is down here, and quadrant 4 is over here and we use no Roman numerals to represent the quadrants. Now, getting into angles, you guys should remember that an angle is formed by rotating a ray about an endpoint. An angle in standard position has a vertex at the origin and its initial side coincides with the positive x axis. Every single angle we ask you guys to draw, you are going to start with the positive x axis, and we call this the initial side of that angle. Now note, this is just a ray. Now when you rotate this ray, we talk about the angle to where that terminates, that rotated ray terminates, to be um, the angle that you're creating, and we call that the terminal side where it ends. So if I take that same ray that we started, that initial side, and I rotate it you know, more than 90 degrees, we call this the actual angle. But this right here is what we would call the terminal side of the angle. And think about terminal, it's where it terminates. So it makes sense, your initial side to your terminal side. And then we usually will draw this line right here. And you can even put like an arrow on that to show the way in which you rotated the ray. That's important because there are two different types of angles. We have both positive angles and negative angles. Now, the direction in which you rotate is going to determine if it's a positive angle or a negative angle. If you're dealing with a positive angle, you are going to rotate in a counterclockwise direction. Now, what do I mean by that? You're going to start with your initial side, and then you are going to rotate in the direction I just rotated in the top example. So for example, if I said graph an angle that's 135 degrees, we are going to rotate counterclockwise. And you can put a little arrow there to show that you rotated in the counterclockwise direction. This would represent 135 degrees, a positive angle. If, however, we want to create a negative angle, you are going to rotate in the clockwise direction. Now, what do I mean by that? If I said right now I want you guys to graph negative 30 degrees, you're going to rotate clockwise and you would go some distance down here. Now, how do I know that I didn't rotate in the 
counterclockwise direction because you can draw an arrow showing that you rotated in the clockwise direction. And that's how you're going to represent positive versus negative angles. So let's do some examples with both positive and negative and um, see how you guys do with this. So for the first example, it says draw an angle in standard position and then state the quadrant in which the terminal side of the angle lies. So starting with the first one, 100 degrees, you are always going to start with this initial side. And then I like to use the axes as like my reference angles, like, like kind of like reference. I know that every time I go to one of the axes, it's an additional 90 degrees. So if I say graph 100 degrees, I just want to go 10 more than 90. So I'm just going to show that this goes a little bit more. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you put it here, I would take off for that because it should be very close to that 90 degrees. I want to let me erase. I hate it when it does this. It like freezes on me. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was an off task on my iPad. Um, where am I going? Um, here. So what we're going to do is um, go back to those notes. Oh my gosh. Ah, where are they? Okay, here we are. Um, what we're going to do for this is we are going to, after getting that angle, and again, closer to the y-axis, just show me the direction in which you rotated, and that's where we're going to get this 100 degree angle. Now, for negative 85, kind of the same idea you are going to start with that initial side. And then remember that if you go clockwise, that represents negative angles. So this would be negative 90 degrees. So what we're gonna do is go five degrees shy, and this right here would represent negative 85 degrees. Going to the next example, we have an angle measurement of 560, what? In order to do this one, I know that one time around is 360, but I need to go more than that. So what you're going to do is subtract 360, and what you should get by doing that is 200 degrees, which means when I draw this angle, I'm going to show that I went counterclockwise one time around, because that represents 360. Then I have to go an additional 200. So think that this is 90, this is 180, I have to go 20 more than 180. So keep this going and then kind of end a little bit past that 180 and then show that terminal side. And then you can even put like a little arrow to show that the direction in which you rotate it. That right there would represent that 560 degree angle. So if you ever go around more than once, you have to show what looks like a spiral in there. Um, so just take your time with those angles that are more than 360 negative 240. So again, get your labels. Negative, which means I'm going to go clockwise. This is negative 90. This is negative 180. This would be negative 270. Now, how did I know that? Just think of multiples of 90. 90 times 1, 90 times 2, 90 times 3, and that's how I'm getting that axis measurement. Now, if I want negative 240, let's draw that initial side, and then we're going to rotate negative 90, negative 180. We're not going to quite hit negative 270. We're going to be 30 shy of that. So just make sure, again, you show the direction in which you rotated. If you don't, this angle looks no different than angle from part A. How would I know the difference? I wouldn't. And that's why it's important you have the way in which you rotate it. So that is how you graph angles. Now let's go back and state the quadrants each of these are in. If you look at this first example, remember that you go in the direction of a capital C, so this would be quadrant two. This one here would be quadrant four, because remember, even though we rotate it in the clockwise direction, the quadrants are always in the same order. It's always that capital letter C. Part C, notice that we landed in quadrant three, and then part D, notice that we are in quadrant two. So the way in which you rotate the angle does not affect the quadrants. The quadrants are always the same in um, the direction of a capital C. Now, the final thing for today, and then we're done with the notes, is this idea of coterminal angles. Coterminal angles become so important in pre-calculus. It is such a big topic. So it's very important you guys understand and practice this. A coterminal angle is when I give you a measurement, and let's just say I said graph 45 degrees. And then I say graph another angle of 
405 degrees. What you should notice is that they start and stop at the same exact spots. So they share the same initial and terminal sides. Um, sometimes it's hard to see with angles that you're not familiar with, but just imagine if I said graph 90 degrees, and then I said graph negative 270 degrees. The idea of you're graphing angles that start and end in the same spot, and if you didn't label, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between which angle it is. So how do we get coterminal angles? You are going to either add or subtract 360 degrees. Because think about it. If you want to land in the same spot right here, every time I go 360 degrees around, it's going to take me to that same spot over and over and over again. If you subtract 360 degrees, it's going to take you to that same spot. So let's look at these final three examples. First thing, it says find one positive and negative coterminal angle to what's given. Well, if I said graph 90 degrees, we would see this right here. So this is a 90 degree angle. If you wanna find a positive coterminal angle, what you can do is just go an additional time around. So note that if I'm here and I go here, but then go another 360 degrees, my first coterminal angle is going to be 90 plus 360. So if I add 100, that would be 460, and then take away 10, that's 450 degrees, would be the positive coterminal angle. Now, if you want a negative coterminal angle, again, start in the same spot, but now rotate the opposite direction. When you think about it, it's really just taking 90 and subtracting 360. So with that being said, we're going to get this answer of negative 270. So the whole idea here is that when you add 360, it's going to take you to that same spot. If you take 90 and you subtract 360, it's going to take you to that same spot as well. So just coming up with two different names um, that represent that same angle of 90 degrees. Oh, I guess there's space down here for us to write those answers. So let's take this and go whoop. And then let's take this and oh, whoa, what did I do? What did I do? Let's put that back there. All right, so next example. And feel free to um, pause the screen, try these on your own, and then check with my key. Um, 60 degrees, let's graph that first. We're gonna go here, and then remember, we're not gonna quite hit up 90. We're gonna go 30 shy of that. So this right here would represent a 60 degree angle. So if we wanna come up with two different names for this, just take 60 and go around one more time and that's gonna take you to an angle of 420 degrees. So note that if you were to be here at the 60 degree and you go around one more time, that's gonna take you to that same exact spot. Now for negative coterminal, same idea. You're gonna take the 60 and now subtract 360 and that's gonna be negative 300 degrees. So if I said right now, graph negative 300 degrees, you're gonna see that you start but then end in the same exact spot. So as a result, that's coterminal. Final example on here is a negative angle. With this negative angle, you're gonna go negative 140 degrees. So, <laughs> my husband just got home with food. Um, so remember that this is negative 180, this is negative 90. I know, I hear, he got the pizza, good. Um, you want to go 40 shy of negative 180, so we're going to go about right here, and then we can show the direction in which we rotated. Now, if I want to find a positive coterminal for this, you're going to take the negative 140, and you are going to add 360. Now, when you do this, you're going to get, what is that, 220? Um, let's see. I subtract that. Um, sorry, I'm getting distracted right now. Oh, yeah, thank you. Can you go put that on the table for me? Thanks, yeah. babe. You're the best. Uh huh. <laughs> um, now, if you ever have a negative angle, let's say it was negative 400, 
and you added 360 and it was still negative, sometimes you have to add 360 more than one time to get that positive angle. So just be careful and make sure your final answer is in fact positive. And then to get a negative coterminal angle for this one, just take the negative 140 and then rotate the opposite way 360 degrees and it looks like when I add those up I hope my math is right I'm gonna get negative 500 degrees um, again if I said right now graph negative 140 graph 220 graph negative 500 you would notice all of those angles start and end at the same spot everyone is so excited about pizza right now oh my gosh all right so let me know if you guys have any questions